Picture a long-range cruise missile priced closer to a guided bomb than a tomahawk. That is the bet behind one of the US-based Anduril's missiles, a subsonic, air-breathing weapon designed for mass, built to fly far, and inexpensive enough to launch in large salvos when defenses are thick. Called the Barracuda 500, the concept pairs modern autonomy with a light warhead and modular payloads, so some rounds can strike while others act as decoys, jammers, or relays. It is meant to come off truck racks, ship containers, or aircraft pallets without forcing a new launcher ecosystem. Anduril's public specs draw a clear outline. The company cites more than 500 nautical miles of range, flight speeds around 500 knots, a payload of more than 100 pounds, and loiter times beyond two hours, depending on route and altitude. In late September 2025, the firm also confirmed a successful ground launch of a prototype surface-launched Barracuda 500 that used a small tail booster to leave a box launcher before transitioning to turbojet crews. So, in today's video, we're taking a closer look at everything we know about the Barracuda 500 missile, including its design, reported performance, and how a ground-launched version would be used. Let's dive in. Anduril is a U.S. defense tech company focused on autonomous systems and software-defined weapons. In 2024, it unveiled Barracuda, a family of subsonic, air-breathing cruise missiles sharing a common airframe and modular electronics. Three variants were introduced. The short-range Barracuda 100, medium-range Barracuda 250, and long-range Barracuda 500. Each can be configured for explosive or non-kinetic payloads, including jammers and relays. In 2025, Anduril adapted the Barracuda 500 for ground launch by adding a detachable solid rocket booster. A September test confirmed clean launch, booster separation, and turbojet transition, proving the airframe needs no redesign. The goal, maximize compatibility and scale. Shared components allow deployment from trucks, ships, containers, or aircraft using a common production line. Next steps include more tests, integration on operational launchers, and securing production contracts. With the context set, let's see what the Barracuda 500 looks like on paper and why those numbers matter. Barracuda 500 is turbojet-powered and subsonic. Company figures repeated in trade reporting describe more than 500 nautical miles of range, cruise speeds near 500 knots, a payload of more than 100 pounds, and the ability to loiter for more than two hours depending on the profile. Anduril has also cited up to 5G of maneuvering for the family, which would help with last-second turns or weaving in terminal flight. These numbers remain company-stated, but they have been consistent since the line's public debut. The ground launch setup adds only the clip-on booster for the initial push off the rail. Once the turbojet is running, the missile behaves like a conventional cruise weapon, using low-altitude routing and waypoints to shape its path around terrain and defended corridors. While guidance details remain classified, the system emphasizes autonomy and coordinated strikes over pinpoint lethality. It is designed for flexible launch, compatible with fighters, bombers, cargo aircraft, trucks, shore batteries, and container modules. This avoids the need for new launch systems, speeding adoption, and focusing costs on the missile, not infrastructure. The operating idea is reached at a price that enables mass. Barracuda 500 trades a heavy warhead for numbers. In layered air defense environments, saturation and timing can matter as much as the effect of any single round. The same airframe can be loaded for different roles. Some missiles carry an explosive payload for land or maritime targets. Others act as decoys, jammers, or relay nodes to pull sensors and interceptors away from the main axis of attack or to help coordinate a strike window. 
The modular bay and autonomy claims matter here because they let a commander mix effects inside one salvo and change the ratio without changing airframes. Cost Context Frames Expectations Tomahawk generally sits around the one to two million dollar range per round and carries a warhead near 1,000 pounds with ranges that extend well beyond 500 nautical miles. Barracuda. 500's payload is much lighter, but reported price targets tied to partner discussions come in around 216,000 US dollars per missile. The performance envelopes overlap at the low end of Tomahawk's reach, yet the intended role is different. Barracuda 500 is a complement that adds volume, dispersion, and sustained salvo potential so that heavier munitions can exploit openings or deliver the main effect once defenses are stressed. The surface launch test proved the concept, but repeated trials in heat, cold, and crosswinds are needed to validate booster reliability and clean separation. Integration on operational launchers is equally important, as real-world adoption depends on crews training with in-service hardware. The bigger challenge is production, reliable supply of engines, solid motors, electronics, and energetics, all bottlenecks in other missile programs. Anderil says shared parts and a software-driven design will lower costs at scale, but that hinges on contracts and funded suppliers. A potential early customer has already raised its hand. At Taipei's defense show in September 2025, Taiwan's Armaments Institute displayed a Barracuda 500 and said it is pursuing a ground-launched variant for local production with a public target below 6.5 million new Taiwan dollars per missile, roughly 216,000 US dollars. The plan outlined in open reporting is to localize the supply chain through agreements with North American firms and disperse road mobile batteries for coastal defense. Quantities and dates were not disclosed, and a formal program definition still needs to be signed. If that deal hardens, it provides a first operational user and a second production base, which is the kind of demand signal a mass-at-cost missile needs. Barracuda 500 aims to make long-range precision affordable for mass use and compatible with launchers already in service. If repeat ground launches, real integrations, and funded production line up, it becomes a practical tool for large, flexible salvos. If they do not, it remains a compelling demo with potential. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.